for entertainment purposes only. Hi and welcome to my video. This video is about quantum physics and disclaimer for entertainment purposes only. I would never dare to say that I understand quantum physics. I don't. It is more about what could quantum physics mean for us on a spiritual level. What does the astrology say about it? What does my card say about it? I know this is a very strange topic for a channel like mine, but I thought about a book of a scientist I once read. And in this book he wrote about his observation that through human history we always had certain discoveries connected to certain developments in human society. For example, if we take Galileo Galilei who said that it is not the sun that is spinning around the earth but that the earth and other planets are spinning around the sun. So we are not the same center of our galaxy and that was revolutionary and even had to take it back in order to survive because the church was so upset and somehow it was the end of the church as it was and during that time not in the exact year but during that time there was the reformation there was Erasmus von Rotterdam there was the renaissance there was a new movement of humanism so it was a moment of change or moment is the wrong word. It took several centuries this development but this development changed the way we saw the world and there were as I said certain developments connected to that in culture and in religion and I have also once read a book from Hans Peter Do. He was a Heisenberg student and he wrote a book about what quantum physics could mean in philosophy because he had an interview with a journalist and he said that he thinks that creation is a beautiful goddess that wants to see herself in the mirror and to recognize how beautiful she is. I mean I'm very grateful for this book because to be honest I don't understand quantum physics. Hans Peter Dürr also said that we have to understand, we have to change our worldview in order to survive. It is the old thinking how we still approach life and we won't survive like that. We have to change our view and this is what also my cards in interestingly enough say. And the cards that I've pulled are patience, queen of fire, vampire, rhythm, change, purifying garden and Chiron and Caridwen. The cards say of course it takes patience but with purifying garden we have to purify our system of how we saw the world from an old standpoint and we have to realize quantum physics brings a new totally new way of relating to life and what it means. It is about a new rhythm and maybe something is visible and invisible at the same time. It stops that one standpoint or one opinion can be the truth. It can only be a moving field of standpoints intertwined and interconnected and that the interconnection of life will become more and more important and that all life is connected and all life may be also the invisible parts of life. How did I find the chart? I mean it is said that Max Planck is the father of quantum physics so I researched when it was the time when he discovered this theory and what I researched is that he discovered it on October 7th 1900 and it must have been during the evening between 8 o'clock in the evening and midnight and I know that because during the afternoon a friend Rubens was a guest and they discussed that something is not working with the theories that are already there and and after that he went into his study room and we know that around midnight he played the piano and he played the Ode to Joy from Beethoven and he was in a huge excitement what his wife was reporting so we know that it must have happened in between and when I looked at the chart I saw that during this time it could only be that he has a Cancer Ascendant or a Gemini Ascendant and to me the energy of Gemini is so appropriate for the theme of but is it a wave or is it a particle because of the dual nature of Gemini or even the nature that has more positions than just one and during the time interestingly enough Neptune was also in Gemini so if you put Neptune on the ascendant you have quite 
the energy of you cannot understand it with your normal mindset. You cannot understand it with your normal daily tools of understanding. And Mercury is in a trine to Neptune and is also in a sextile to Saturn. So this to me is very beautiful because it means we are in a way able to understand both sides. Because in this horoscope, this opposition between Neptune and Saturn conjunct Chiron, there is already this theme of disillusionment, of being disappointed, of feeling humbled, that we don't understand, that we cannot grasp it. But if we are with Mercury in Scorpio, where we are able to let go of everything what we thought before what is real and allow to say, okay, maybe it is both. It can be a particle at times and it can be a wave at times. That reality maybe is more fluid and that it is not that fixed what we thought before and that this revolution is something what was also in my card this takes patience to fully understand i mean there is a reason why in zen buddhism all those teachings are like breaking the patterns of your mind and that the truth lies in between that it is not to be understood with just normal approach or just a regular daily life approach. It will change the way we perceive reality and also the way we approach how we understand reality. With this Neptune-Saturn opposition, it is not possible anymore to say this is the truth, this is what is real, that this is over. It is constantly changing and that maybe the truth is like many perspectives in a circle. Not one standpoint overpowers the other, but that the many bring the truth. And if it's true that we come into the age of Aquarius, then it is about the many that bring the understanding, the many that bring the truth and not one overpowering the other and that the rage that we have at the moment of very extreme standpoints that say this is the truth, no, this is the truth. We see that especially in America, both is wrong. It cannot be one or the other. It is in a way both at the same time and even more. Neptune in Gemini says, no, it's not just two, the Gemini aspect, it is even more. You cannot try to own it, as far as I understand it, that it is constantly moving and that we have to move. The times are over where we have a certain standpoint and this is something where we can rely on, but that relying on the truth is being in constant change, being constantly reacting and dancing with life, rhythm, that the truth is coming to us when we are constantly dancing with life. The truth is a dance. We have a great fire trine in this horoscope between the moon in Aries, Mars in Leo and Jupiter Uranus conjunct the north node and the fixed star Antares in Sagittarius. And this is very fascinating to me because a fire trine is about the joy of life, the enthusiasm. 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 The enthusiasm <laughs> about life. The enthusiasm about new ideas and new discoveries and this joy of life, this dance of life, this dance of new discoveries and that maybe um, those new discoveries will not only come also in science with Uranus on the North Node by the typical way to approach truth but maybe through dancing, maybe through meditating. And isn't it fascinating that Max Planck played the piano after he discovered, and to me that is also a very beautiful symbol. The Ode to Joy talks about the daughter of Elysium. It is about maybe connecting to other dimensions, to connecting to other forms of reality, and that maybe discoveries or approaches also come through something like music, through new ways of approaching it. It also is on Antares opposing Pluto and Antares is also double-sided. Antares is a power that is very fierce and can be very destructive or very mind-opening, very opening of horizons and that it is on us. And I mean, we know that quantum physics is the ground of nuclear weapons, so we know how destructive it can be or how life-affirming it can be, how mind-boggling it can be and that it might be 
a road where we are able to communicate with other dimensions, with other universes and galaxies. And I feel that the jump in consciousness that quantum physics brings will change us as humanity forever. And this is what also people like Carolyn Mays say, that we will become less dense in the way our body is in the way our emotions are, in the way our life is. Quantum physics can destroy life or can be a bridge between the visible and the invisible, that it is both. And I mean, there was uh, Fritjof Capra during the 80s who wrote the book The Tao of Physics. I will also link that down below where he said that there needs to be a reconnection between science and spirituality and that we need to bridge that. This either or is found in the mysticism of the East. This kind of, I don't try to fix what is life? It is both. It is visible and not visible. Buddhism often has this double negation. It is not non-existent, not unreal. The truth is in between. The moment you look at something, you are already away from the truth. So one perspective can never be the owner of the truth. It is not possible. The moment you fix on something like I do right now, I cannot find the truth. For a moment, the spark and maybe one tiny bit of this spark are of use or shine a part of the truth or maybe not. But no one is able to find that point. It is what I said before, the many that will be the truth and also the many dimensions of life that are intertwined. Not, I don't know, God is above, the world of the dead is below, but it is all intertwined. It is all existent at the same time. And the way we perceive reality will change forever and it might even change we are as humans. If we would be able to travel back in time, would we find a different way of consciousness in people? I don't know. I mean, if we look at Greek dramas, we can see that people uh, thousands of years ago had similar problems and similar fears and similar hopes. But had they the same horizon? I don't know. I just know that if I look at younger generations, I'm sometimes completely shocked how mature they are and that I never would have been that mature at that age. So I feel like there is a constant development and that to me it feels like it is speeding up and it will be interesting when Uranus will be in Gemini and Pluto will be in Aquarius or transiting Pluto will be in Aquarius and transiting Uranus will be in Gemini, how this will affect the discoveries of quantum physics because then they both will aspect the sun at the same time in a trine. So this this will be really, really interesting. Even more emphasis on discoveries or approaches that bring us healing or that bring us destruction. And I feel like it will be both. The south node is in the 12th house and the north node is in the 6th house. So it is it is not meant to be in the unknown. It is meant to be included in our daily life and it will change our daily life forever. And Hans Peter Doe once said in an interview that the problem is that we are still in the mindset of the classic physics. We have to change our mindset. As a conclusion, I would say of this babbling around is that um, we will only be able to understand more the way we are able to change ourselves. It is not that this is quantum physics and we just have to find more formulas, more formulas, and then we will find the truth. But quantum physics is like something that surrounds us and we have to open like a flower to receive. But that means to change the way we perceive first and foremost ourselves and life. It is a new form of experiencing life. With purification, it seems like that it is a constant purification and that this constant purification is needed and that at the end we might not even recognize how we perceive life. And it is a very adventurous journey. The moment we are joyfully dancing with life, not knowing so much, not being fixated so much, more being in the moment, it will change the perception also of spirituality. The journey that we are on, that maybe this linear journey from bad to good or from young soul to old soul, that all these concepts maybe are just constructs that maybe are part of a truth, 
but are never the truth alone. So I hope this was helpful or at least it was entertaining. Till next time, namaste.